welcome you today. We again come to God's word and we'll close with a moment of prayer. I'm always grateful for you joining with me. We're going through the book of James. And as we walk through James, we realize that there's two dimensions to the Christian life and to following Jesus. There's the experiential dimension and there's the ethical dimension. And James wires those two together like few other books in the Bible. Jesus, of course, did this in his teaching ministry. The experiential part is that as our sins can be forgiven, our hearts can change. Uh, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. God's voice can speak to us. We, 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 we can just, just worship him and just be enveloped with his presence. That's the experiential part. But the scriptures are very clear that the experiential reality of walking with Jesus has to translate into the ethical dimension of how we relate to the people around us. It affects our moral decision making and it really affects how we treat people. This is, this is the character part of growing and walking in Jesus. And we have a great example of this in verse 19 of James chapter 1, where James says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So we're not so much in the experiential dimension of encountering God and being enveloped in his presence. All of that is assumed. But because of Jesus living powerfully in our lives and the experiences and the encounters we've had with God, because of that, we find ourselves really transformed in the way we're living with other people, the way we're treating them, and the way we ethically handle life. And this is, this is a tough one for many of us. He's saying, if you know Jesus, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to go opposite to the human tendency. The human tendency is to speak before you listen, to shoot off your mouth, to not be able to really concentrate on what other people are saying. But when you're full of the Holy Spirit, it's going to have this very practical dimension. It's, it's that you're going, to, you're going to speed up your listening and slow down your talking. Talk about the transforming power of Jesus in us. I mean, you can say all you want, you're full of the Holy Spirit, but I want to know how healthy your relationships are and how good a husband or a wife or a parent or a roommate you are. I mean, this, this, is, this is the work of Jesus in us, and, and, and he hits at one of the hard ones for us to slow down in our talking and to speed up in our listening, to not shoot off our mouths before we've engaged our brains, to not just spout off what we think before we've really tried to hear and understand what another person's saying to us. And, you know, speaking less and listening more is actually one of the ways we love each other. And when's the last time somebody just listened to you for 15 minutes without interrupting you or without losing their mind wandering to something else? I mean, how little this happens in our noisy, rapid, self-centered culture anymore. But if you're full of the Holy Spirit, if you've had an experience with God, eventually these are the things that ought to be happening in your life. And of course, James writes them just to re remind us to just to keep focusing on these things. Here's where Jesus wants to take you ethically in your life. First of all, you're going to be a person who talks less and listens more. Wow. That's an amazing thing. And the reason is, is this, verse 20, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. He's just said everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and in that process, slow to become angry. And what's the problem with anger? When we just start going with anger at people, uh, rarely is God's purpose for our ministry to that per person accomplished. The anger of humans does not produce the righteousness that God desires. It's pretty amazing. And God can, by the power of his spirit, take take our bitterness towards people, our unforgiveness, that anger, or just that touchiness in us. That just, I'm just always being ticked off. I'm always being bothered by people around me. And that, that's why I shoot my mouth off. I say things I later regret. I don't really try to sit down and listen and understand it from the other person's perspective. I'm just angry. But here's where the gospel of Jesus Christ begins to transform us in a very powerful and profound way. 
And so I'd just like to invite you to pray with me this, this day. Father, we thank you. Lord, here, here we, we're all convicted right now. Lord, we just have all these memories of times we've just spoken before we've listened, times we've shot our mouths off and just kind of let people know, just give people a piece of our mind before we've loved them and respected them enough to listen, where we've let anger carry the agenda of the day rather than, rather than the purposes and righteousness of God leading us. But thank you, out of encounter with you, you can cause the righteousness of God to work through our lives. Would you do that? Would you forgive us where we've sinned with our mouths and where, 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 where we've sinned with our anger? And would you just renew our hearts today? Give us new chances. Whatever encounter we have with people today or tomorrow, we just pray in Jesus' name that you'll make us slow to talk, quick to listen, and I pray that you'll replace anger with the ministry of the Holy Spirit through us to other people. In Jesus' name, amen.